Hey kids, welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 6, Static Variables and Constants, Exercise Number 5. Last exercise, we got some practice in static variables. This exercise, we're getting some practice in constants. We have a choose your own adventure. I did see in the last exercise, I'm going to be a little consistent here and go with the same C. So we're going to do Netflix subscriptions again. All of these exercises have pretty much the same answer. Let's go ahead and get started. The Netflix class analyzes data about the cost of Netflix subscriptions in different countries and has an instance variable for their subscription fees. In Netflix.java, we're going to declare and initialize a constant max price to 12. The method count under max returns the number of countries with subscription fees that are less than or equal to the constant and max price. In the count under max method, traverse the instance variable prices. Count each value that is less than or equal to the constant max price, then return count. Or we're not done yet, kids. In my console, we're going to print the results of a call to count under max on the count prices object. Note, use the constant max price when displaying the results. Want to learn more about the data set, kids? You should always look at the data set. And this is what we should return when we're done. Well, let's look at our code. Looks like we have a price list here. It's an array, a bunch of values in here. We're instantiating a new object country prices. It is from the Netflix class, passing along the array price list. Well, that looks like everything. Let's go to the Netflix class. We have one array prices. We're going to declare and initialize our constant max price right here. We have our constructor Netflix takes prices as a variable. And then we have to traverse prices to count the number of countries with fees less than or equal to max price. Well, that doesn't sound too bad, kids. I'm pretty sure if we take this step by step, it's not too bad. First, let's look at our constant. Typically, we have our final keyword in there, our data type, and variable name. We learn this pretty neat trick in another exercise. If we declare it public static, it becomes an instance of the class, not the object, and we can share it through all of the subclasses. So a lot of times when you're declaring final is a variable, you're also doing it as public static. And I think that's what we're going to do for ours today. What does that look like? Well, we want to use the public keyword static because we want an instance of the class, not the object. We're going to declare it final. And we are dealing with prices. And if you remember in the array, they were doubles. So we're going to return the same data type double. We are using the max price. Remember in Java, when we declare final, it's uppercase and we use the underscore to divide words. So it's max price. Then that is going to be equal to, and they want us to set our constant to 12. Don't forget your semicolon. Well, that's it, kids. You just declared a constant. Good job. Now we have to do number two. We have to traverse this count under max. Let's go ahead and take care of that. We want to make a traversal, so we're going to need a for loop. We want to figure out if a value is under max price. So we need an if loop, and we're going to need to track how many times that happens because we need to return something. And what are we returning? We're going to return a number, the number of countries under the max price that we set above, which is 12. Let's start what we're going to return, which is going to be a number. Let's call ours count because we just want to count the number of countries under that max number. So in count equals zero. That means if that's the value in a return, we want to return whatever count is at the end. Now we need to traverse through that array. That means we need a for loop. 
don't forget your curly braces. And I'm going to put end of for loop here. What goes inside the loop? Well, we're looking through an entire array. So I think I can use my enhanced for loop. And I just want to know if the value is under the max price of 12. So is the fee for the United States less than 12? If it is, I want it added to count. If not, we're just going to keep running through the loop. In an enhanced for loop, that means I need a variable to store the value at the index. So it's going to be a double because the fees are in double. And let's just call that value because that's what we're storing, a value. We separate what we're storing with the array by a colon. And then what is the array name we're looking through? It is prices. So we're going to put prices. Now we want something to happen. We want to know if that value at that index is less than price, we want to add to our count. Well, that's an if statement. So if our condition, our curly cues, this is the end of if loop. And we want to do just what I said. If that value is less than or equal to the max price variable from above, then we want to add one to count. So count plus plus. That means we're going to go through our prices array and it's going to be stored at each index is value. And if that value is a less than the max price of 12 from above, we're going to add one to our counter at the end of the array. Whenever we call count under max, we're going to return count, which is how many countries are under that max price. And we're not done yet. Kids, we have some work to do in my console. Let's head over there and finish up this exercise. Looks like we have to go down here and do some print statements. System.out.println. And what do we want to put inside? Down here it says the number of countries with prices less than 12. Let's put the same thing. Number of countries with prices less than 12.0. And then we're going to concatenate. And what do we want to call? Kids, hold on. Let's even be more flexible here. Our constant can change, really. We can filter through different information if we want to. If we want to go into Netflix, we can change that. How about instead we do something like this? Plus, where is max price stored? Under our Netflix class. And the constant name is? max price and then concatenate again and we'll do our colon and that's our entire statement now if we want to change our constant in the future we can do that without having to come back and write our print statement we still have to print off how many countries let's go system.out.println and this is going to be which object we created What's the country prices object from above? So country prices and what method? We want the count under max method from the Netflix class. Now when I hit run, I should get number of countries with prices less than 12. And it looks like I should get three to print off. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. Looks like we missed a semicolon, kids. Classic roads. Let's clear this off. Try one more time and hit run. Our Netflix is capitalized. I think that's the last one. Let's clear one more time. There you go, we got three to print off. Looks like our code work, kids.
key takeaway from this lesson, kids, is how to write a constant. And there's two ways. We can declare it within the subclass, or we can declare it static, which is an instance of the class, not the object. And if we're doing an instance of the class, not the object, we go public static. That's what the static does. Final, which means it cannot be changed. Our data type, variable name, and whatever we're setting it to. And we learned this public static with our constant means we can create a constant variable that can't be changed across all of our classes. In our example here, we use 12 to see if any of the countries has a subscription fee with less than that. And the constant's helpful because it can never be changed. We know we always have the right data set we're working with for each object. And that's very important to have in computer science. Finally, we learned how to use this constant in a method. This time we traverse through an array and look for values that were less than the value that we declared in max price. Pretty neat way of using a constant, kids. Hopefully this video helped you understand constants a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye.